there never was a diagnosis in 1996 of HIV AIDS. So the history of HIV now, there is no history going back to February 10th, 1996. But I will tell you what he died of. So people, and it is a good question, uh, you know, so if Tommy Morrison did not have HIV or AIDS, what did he die of? And people die. People die for various reasons. And there is no reason why Tommy Morrison could not have died of something other than HIV AIDS, especially now that we find out that he was never diagnosed with AIDS. What Tommy Morrison died of on September 1, 2013, he died of cardiac arrest septic shock, septicemia, and multi-organ failure. He was put into a medically induced coma 24 hours before he died, and he never got out of that coma. Why we went down that path was nothing to do with HIV AIDS. In 2011, uh, he came out of jail. He was put in jail for um, a felony fugitive warrant of arrest supposedly for, um, for marijuana. Um, it turned out to be a bogus felony fugitive arrest. It turned out to be an $80 unpaid fine from South Dakota. Uh, but for some reason, he ended up in jail uh, for 30 days and was extradited from one state to another. And he ended up in Wichita, Kansas, which is where I am now. And when he, um, when he was finally bailed out of jail in Wichita, Kansas, he came out with his chest hurting. And so I took him immediately to a physician in Wichita. The physician's name is um, Dr. Osio. And the physician, and he's written a document here, and it's in court records, um, said that um, the visit on September 29, 2011 uh, was a result of an insect bite, probably a spider, that had occurred a few days prior to his visit on the 29th. And it was necessary to drain the abscess at that time. If you require any additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me. So that's from Dr. Osio. Then here is a statement everything there of his incision and his draining. Here is the abscess after he drained it, and that's Tommy's chest. I don't know, can you see that okay, Hannibal? Yeah, I can see it, and he did have chest implants or something, right? Did that have anything to do with the, uh, the it, infection? Um, it could possibly have done, but they didn't mention that it was because of the chest implant. Um, it, it was basically the insect bite, and after they uh, did surgery on him, they actually took out major and minor pec muscle. And this is what his chest looked like when he came out of hospital, and there was a piece of gauze over there that the, um, the um, home health nurse had to change. So she, she took off the four by four piece of gauze, and I said to her, but there's something still in his chest. And she said, no, 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 that's all I need to do is just change the goals. And I said, no, there's something in his chest. So I even go, and these are real photos, right? I even go as far as getting one of those flat tongues and showing her, no, there's something right there. And so she looked into his chest. And I'm going to reenact it because people need to know exactly what began the downfall. Here is Tommy's chest, and just sticking out was just a very fine piece of thread. And so the nurse pulled on it, and she pulled on it, and out came all this gauze from Tommy's chest. And here I have squished, squished all the um, gauze up in, in like a tissue box, so you can see, but this was all in Tommy's chest. It was actually 12 foot of surgical gauze. It was covered in blood clots and it came out of his chest while he was sitting on a stool in the kitchen. And after the nurse pulled all this out, she then collapsed on the sofa. I had to take care of her. 
and a friend of Tommy's had to take care of Tommy. But this is everything that came out of his chest and the surgeon had left it in there for eight days. A one hour surgery with one day outpatient turned into an eight day inpatient. And when we came out, 12 foot of gauze had been left in Tommy's chest without any documentation. This is Tommy's chest after the gauze came out and you could literally put your whole hand in his chest right there. And they did take out that implant as well as major and minor pec muscle. Um, it took about a you year. Did you the hospital after you took that out? Or did you just think we got to take this out and you will be all right? I'm sorry? Did he go back to the hospital after you guys removed that to, to find out why, why they left it in there? We didn't, no. The, the, health, um, the home health lady, she then um, changed the outside gauze and that wound remained open for a year because it had to heal from the inside out. This is a picture of it exactly one year later after surgery and you can see there is the scar right there. But that day that she pulled it out that night, Tommy on the way to our bedroom, his right leg gave way, which would be the same side as, as his chest wound, and his head went just straight through uh, the bedroom wall, and he fell on his neck on the side, and that was the beginning of the 21 months of downfall where we were in and out of hospital because of septic shock. And people will say, Hannibal, well, why didn't, why didn't she file um, a lawsuit against the surgeon? Well, the surgeon was advised that he had left 12 foot of gauze, and I did file papers with the Medical Advisory Board in Tennessee. They lost the first round of papers. I had to file the papers again. Remember, we're in and out, out of hospitals. Here I am trying to file papers against the Medical Advisory Board against that surgeon. And in the end, they said, you're out of time. Statute of limitations, I'm sorry, we can't do anything about that. And that was the beginning of the 21 months of downfall, nothing to do with HIV AIDS. And it wasn't just like a little piece of gauze like this that you know the media make it out to be. It was as thick as this surgical gauze and, and he fought it. He fought the septic shock and septicemia, but the antibiotics for the septicemia just didn't, they didn't work. And, and so he passed away on September 1, 2003, because of that. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.